Hi, I'm Lisa Frost. I am a member at University United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge. I'm a spiritual director there. Um, and it's our time for our midweek devotional. So happy to be here. Uh, I'm recording this in my kitchen today. We have been um, on a vacation, our first trip since quarantine. So the first one in a year and a half or so. And um, it's good to be home, but we had a wonderful time um, while we were away. We went to a place that's pretty different than Louisiana. It is, uh, we went to Northern California and visited Napa and Sonoma Valleys, and then visited some friends in the Carmel area. And Irby was um, kind enough to switch weeks with me. When I told him we'd be in wine country, um, he did the um, devotional last week. And so I'm this week, and he said, that would be a great location for a midweek devotional. I didn't record there, but I did think about it a good bit. Um, I just kind of carried that idea with me. Greg and I visited vineyards. We noticed the tidy work of many people, the straight rows of vines, the careful tending of attaching the tendrils to the support wires. And then the pruning that was being done one day when we were there, they were pruning the upper um, vine so that just the right num amount of sunlight could come through um, and make the, the vines and the grapes as fruitful as possible. There was a lot of intention in this work. Um, there was experience and knowledge. And there was also, I think, living with the uncertainty of elements, the, the wind, the rain or lack thereof, um, the heat. All of those things come together to make these uh, vines productive. Uh, so you, some of you may know, I love a list. And as I started thinking, where are vineyards uh, mentioned in scripture? The very first one I found was in Genesis. Um, and it said, Noah began to be a man of the soil and he planted a vineyard. I don't remember that. So good to see. Um, there are lots of rules in um, the Hebrew scriptures about vineyards, about planting, about harvesting, um, one of them in Deuteronomy, some very practical advice, you shall not sow your vineyard with two kinds of seed, lest the whole yield be forfeited. Um, and then um, in Deuteronomy also, and I love this one, um, if you go into your neighbor's vineyard, you may eat your fill of grapes, as many as you wish, but you shall not put any in your bag. Very practical. Uh, vineyards were well known to the people of Israel and appear often um, in Scripture. The Gospel of Matthew gives us that um, intriguing parable of the vineyard manager who goes to hire workers and at the end of the day pays um, the same. Each person receives the same of uh, the people that have worked all day and the people that just worked that last hour. The story can sometimes trouble us, um, but I think that it helps us see the wide scope of God's generous uh, care for all of us. In the Gospel of John, we uh, hear Jesus describing himself in, himself in many ways, um, all using words that were very familiar to us and to uh, those people of his time. Um, these are the I am statements of the book of the Gospel of John. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. Can you hear God's spell uh, singing in the background there? I am the gate for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then the one, the last one in the book of John, I am the true vine, um, which is, of course, the one I thought about first. It's one of my favorite passages. Um, and here is um, some snippets, some selected verses, because it's a little long. Uh, from the Gospel of John uh, in Eugene Peterson's uh, The Message. Um, Jesus is teaching his disciples and he tells them, I am the real vine and my father is the farmer. He cuts off every branch of me that doesn't bear grapes. And every branch that is grape bearing, he prunes back so it will bear even more. Live in me. Make your home in me just as I do in you. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy and your joy um, wholly mature. You didn't choose me, remember? I chose you and put you in the world to bear fruit, fruit that won't spoil. As fruit bearers, whatever you ask the Father in relation to me, he gives you. 
But remember the root command, love one another. So this leaves me asking today, what fruit is mine to bear in this season? What are you planting and tending? What season is this for you? What might you need to let go of or prune away to make room for fruitfulness and rest? What might need to go so the sun can come up um, and through and allow uh, fruit to grow? From Proverbs, there was this little snippet um, and it reads, she considers a field and buys it out of her earnings. She, she plants a vineyard. First of all, I love that because it's, um, it's in the feminine uh, with that feminine pronoun, but it also allows us to think, what are we planting? So as we close today, hear this blessing from Jan Richardson. It's not exactly about a vineyard, um, but it is about a nest and branches. So um, I thought it might be a good thing to close from. This is from her, um, I think this is her latest book, The Cure, the Cure for Sorrow. So uh, it's a book of blessings. The title is Blessing That Holds a Nest in Its Branches. Can't you just see that little nest? And she writes, The emptiness that you have been holding for such a long season now, the ache in your chest that goes with you night and day in your sleeping, your rising, think of this, not as a mere hollow, the void left from the life that has leached out of you. Think of it like this, as the space being prepared for the seed. Think of it as your earth that dreams of the branches the seed contains. Think of it as your heart making ready to welcome the nest its branches will hold. So I hope you... Have a wonderful week this week and that you feel that blessing, that generous spirit of God's care uh, for you. Until uh, we see each other again.